just for this year. I think Memphis is thinking he's got a sore throat from screaming during skillet. <laughs> Did he enjoy it? Yes, we Good. That's good. Okay, let's go with the scripture. Let's take the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 1. You with me? Yes. Amen. Father, I thank you. Verse 17, 117. I thank you, Father, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, you're the Father of glory. I thank you that you have given unto us and we receive your wisdom your revelation, the knowledge of you, the eyes of our understanding are opened, enlightened, so that we will know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your glory, what is our inheritance as your saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead, seated him at your own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Daddy, you put all things under Jesus' feet. You've given Jesus to be the head of all things to the church, which is his body. And we are the fullness of you that filleth all in all. Do you believe that? We are, he filled us up. Do you know what, when you look at this now in Ephesians 1, 3, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, four, well look at that. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame <gasps> before him in love, having predestined us by the adoption of, of children by Jesus Christ to whom according ooh, to the good pleasure of his will. That was his pleasure to adopt us, to bring us into the kingdom. That, it, it, isn't this overwhelming sometimes to think the position that you have? Okay, so when you got born again, okay, did Jesus operate in time when he come to the earth? Yes. Did he also operate in heavenly time. Okay. Did Peter operate in time when he walked on the water? No. No. Okay. When, when Jesus fled, remember the crowd was going to take him and throw him off? He didn't operate in time. He operated where there's no time in the heavenly. And that, and that was a, a sample to us what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be operating in the heavenly time whenever we have need. Who, who told, who commanded the sun to stand still? Joshua. Joshua commanded, commanded the sun to stand, still, to stand still so that he could win the battle. He operated in the heavenly time, which there is no time. Right, isn't that awesome? Now we can do the same thing. So when you need something done and you need it done now, you operate in, in heavenly time because you call it in. It's your faith that will do that. Do you under, we got that, right? Right. Okay. Now, we thank you, Father. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise. I've got to put that right down there. Now, what we want to do is let's look at, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just bring us back a little bit to last week's, okay? And that is uh, not last week's, but the week before in 14. So at the end of 17, okay, Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans 7, 24 through 25. Notice that he didn't say, I thank God for Jesus Christ our Lord, now get this here, but rather I thank God I'm delivered from the body of this death through Jesus Christ. Did you get that? We're delivered from death, from hell. That's what he was saying. We're delivered onto life. When you get born again, 
were delivered unto life. Do you get that now? All right, all right. You want to say that back to me? He, he's delivered from death, from death, right? Mm -hmm. Because the flesh, and what also does the flesh do? I'll go on a little bit. Notice that he didn't say, I thank God for Jesus Christ our Lord, but rather I thank God I'm delivered from the body of this death through Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul was describing the fertility of trying to serve God in the flesh as well. He was saying, no longer do, do I serve God in the flesh. And what is the flesh? The Old Testament. It, isn't it? It's what they had to do, huh? To earn, right? They were called servants, right? Okay. So here we come along. It was servant, then it became friend to Abraham, who was our father. And then with Jesus Christ, we became we became family. We became son and daughters. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. I, I like this time of our life. So trying to serve God in the flesh, the flesh part of us, body and soul, will always fall short. It always falls short. You know when you're trying to do something good and you just try so hard and you fall at the wayside and it just doesn't work? And pretty soon, oh, I'm trying so hard. Like a kid tries so hard to be good, and they just fall. It's because the flesh and the world is pulling at our flesh. So the flesh part of us, the body and the soul, will always fall short. Imperfection can't be perfect. Can't be perfect. Got it? Old Testament. How do I ever go out? Of the, uh, how do I ever get out of this? Praise God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I am a brand new person inside of me. We are brand new. When you got born again, you became brand new. Amen. For those who aren't born again, there's death over them. What does that mean, death over them? That they're not saved. They're not saved? What does that mean, though? They go to hell. What? They go to hell. They go to hell. Yeah. That's death. If you're not born again, there's just no other way to get there. there, there you know, um, um, Ofer Winfrey said there's other ways to go to heaven. New age. There's only one way. You know, you're Buddhist, you're Hindu, you're all those Muslim. There's more ways to get to heaven? No. There's only one way. And it, it encompasses everybody. So it's just really good. Then Paul moved right into chapter 8 when he speaks of, of letting our own born-again spirit dominate our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. When you get to know the Word of God, what do you do? What do you go? Then you want to operate, and all of a sudden you change, don't you? Mm -hmm. What you used to do wrong, I mean, here I was an alcoholic and smoked like a chimney, and then how can you do that one day and the next day you're done? How can you do that? Because I was a brand new person. Now, some people aren't delivered that easily, and don't put them down. Don't put them down. I mean, if they come and get saved and they come the next time and they're drunk, don't get undone for crying out loud. Leave the flesh alone. They'll catch up to it, right? Yeah. So, um, so Romans 7 describes frustration, defeat, sin, and coming alive. Romans 8 overflows with victory. The spirit, the spirit slash spirit, is mentioned once in chapter 7 and 21 times in chapter 8 Paul was Paul was contrasting Christ living through us Romans 8 with our trying to live for God so now when you try to live for God okay do you think that's going to be a little bit hard when when okay um how do you put this simple? When you have a baby. Some didn't have babies, but when you have a baby, you all of a sudden a mother. I wish they, you know, when the baby came out, they would have had instructions on it, but they, they did. Yeah, you got it, don't you? But right here is the instructions. But we didn't know that. We just followed what our mamas did, you know, and some mamas didn't teach, or, or some people didn't like have a mama, or you know what I mean? So... What are you, you going to do? 
pull up your little girl panties and keep on going. So if we're born again and have this new man, new nature, then we are in Christ Jesus. And where are you seated? In heavenly places. In heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Where do I find that? Ephesians 2, 6. Romans 8, 1. If we let this brand new spirit live through us, there is no condemnation, no judgment, no sentence against us. If we, if we just cooperate, just think it's that easy. The, the, okay. Um, condemnation refers to declaring something unfit for use. So when the devil brings condemnation, actually, he doesn't really do it. We do it. But that sin nature that we used to belong to, we start, oh, I did this and I'm not worthy of that. I do that yet. And all of a sudden I gotta go, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm forgiven. It, I'm done. But I just did it an hour ago. It doesn't make any difference, right? Mm -hmm. Condemnation, condemning a building, condemnation. So what the devil wants us to do is condemn this house, all right? So that our spirit man won't, won't, won't um, operate in the word of God. It'll operate in the flesh, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. We don't want to do that. The devil says, you sorry thing, what makes you think God would use you? Because we're, perf we're imperfect through our flesh. That's the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, it's in the flesh. That's not perfect, right? Mm -hmm. they, but they weren't born again, were they? Yeah. They had to keep the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got that all. Instead of being something good, it actually became our condemnation. Now, if you go back and you go under the Old Testament, it will bring condemnation on you. You can't do this. You can't do that. Remember the, 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 the preacher, I think it was, that came out and said, don't spit on that flower? Mm -hmm. And the boys went over and spit on the flower. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. Some didn't, but they wished they had the guts to do it. So if you tell, don't do something, you're going to do it. Did you ever do that to a kid? Now, don't clean up your dish. I'll show you, I'll clean it up. Well, we got you right there. But, but you see what happens? That's condemnation, that's destroying, and that's what the Old Testament was doing. It was, it was actually bringing condemnation onto us. There's a difference between in the flesh and after the flesh, and in the spirit and after the spirit. If we're born again, in Romans 8, 4, and 5, if we're born again, we are in the spirit, if we aren't born again, we're in the flesh. That's as simple as it is. Can the flesh get into heaven? No. Can, can the spirit, if you're born again, get in? That's the only way you can get there. You can do all these wonderful things. You know, you can volunteer and do all these things. You want to do that because you love God. You want to serve because you love God. That, that makes sense, doesn't it? Okay. And no, okay, so in the flesh. In, in speaks of our position in Christ, in spirit, or in Christ, in the flesh, or after, speaks of how we are experiencing things. So if we get into the flesh, what's going to happen? That's what we're going to experience. Mm -hmm. It's going to work against us, right? Mm -hmm. If we try to do something, what is going to happen? What's going to happen? Okay, we, we have, we've got Abraham and Sarai. How did that work for them? Not good. What did they do? They went down in the will of God and did it, tried doing it themselves. Yep. Nobody can hear us. <laughs> good. They tried doing it their own way. And, and they had an Ishmael. Yes. That was not from his loins. That was, that was through the flesh, the arm of the flesh. Okay? And, and this feud still goes on. That's the Muslims. It still goes on today because of the flesh. Yes. Now, when we do things in the flesh, we may, it may look like, oh, we're, we're really doing good like this, but it will catch up. Mm -hmm. It will catch up instead of trusting God. You know, and, and when you ask him, Lord, should we do this or should we do that? 
and you wait, and then he says, do that, and you do it, wow. But if he, do, if he doesn't say, but you're anxious. I know, Ben there did that. Right? Mm -hmm. What happens to you? Bang, right into a wall. Right? Yep. So now, we don't want to be in that position. Okay, let's take the righteousness of God. Now we can pick up from here. And in Romans 7, Pastor Kenny, you want to start to read that? Romans 7 isn't a normal Christian life. It's the frustration of the person who's trying to serve God out of their own human ability. They could either be non-Christian or born again, but our flesh self is incapable of ever living the victorious life God intended for us. Romans 8 shows us the spirit-filled life. It's describing the person who has understood the power of the gospel and is letting the spirit of God live through them. The entire book of Romans re reinverberates with the message of God's grace. Turn from self-reliance, self-salvation, and self-righteousness. Accept God's free gift of righteousness and salvation by faith in the gospel. Live by faith in God's grace. Paul begins Romans 9, laminating the fact that the Jewish people were trusting in their own righteousness to produce salvation. He spoke of his deep longing for his natural brothers. Paul himself was a Jew to be saved. Instead of receiving the free gift of God to Jesus, they were trying to earn salvation. They didn't want to come and be dependent on Christ the Savior. They were trusting in their own goodness instead. Then Paul shift gears by saying, Well, it's not a total loss. A true Jew isn't just a physical, natural-born Jew. But those who are the true children of promise who walk with the faith of Abraham. Again, this brings up some of the offensive things to these religious people. Now, this, this brings back, and we all heard the testimony. Remember Jerry Savelle? Mm -hmm. He bought a plane. Yeah. This person came along. He was, he was praying about a, getting a plane. Okay, and this person came along and said, boy, I got such a deal for you and blah, blah, blah. Oh, this must be God, and he bought it. And then he realized it was the arm of the flesh. And I mean, you all heard that testimony. You didn't hear that testimony. Who heard it? I heard it. Could you turn, tell us a little bit about it, Miss Dee Dee? He just ended up having a lot of problems. A lot of problems. And his heart wasn't at peace. Mm -mm. No, and things weren't happening good for him. No. With the plane, he had a lot of um, financial problems with the plane. Yeah. And then well, how did he get out from under it? He, he sold it. He sold it. Okay. But that taught him a lesson. But he's able to help so many other people. Was that God? That person came along and offered, and it was a very good deal. He thought that was God instead of going and consulting with God. Isn't that what he said? Mm -hmm. Sometime when that good deal comes along, it's just like a man comes along and, or a wife comes along, or, you know, this guy comes along, oh, he's the one, and you marry him, you go. <laughs> Next morning, it's, good morning, Elmer Fudd, yeah. or good morning, Sister Gladys, or something like that. You know what I mean? You get yourself a real, do you remember um, the questions, the 10 questions for marriage, and this guy married this girl? Do you remember that one? Anyway, um, he, the wedding, the day of the wedding, she had a meltdown. He never saw that side of her. That was after they were married. And then um, on their honeymoon, she had a meltdown. She was nuts. She would be, I mean, that's, that's basically, she was schizophrenic. She'd all of a sudden go off. He suffered with that for years. He didn't stop to ask the questions. The ten questions, okay? But he didn't realize he could get out of it. Do you, do you understand? Yeah. So anyway, um, just knowing that God will give us a way out. When it's anxiousness, when we're pushing the chain, it's not going to work. So righteous heathen, who would like to read a little bit of that? Didi, go ahead. Right there. Okay. At the end of Romans 9, Paul made a summary of things he had thus far and transitioned into chapter 10. 
we sh what shall we say then? That the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have obtained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, has not obtained to the law of righteousness. Romans 9, 30 and 31. Well, that's quite confusing, ain't it? Mm. Do, do we need to stop? Well, when we read a little bit yeah. more, we'll get an idea, okay? We just don't understand how radical this statement was to the people Paul was writing to in his day. It was talking to people who were very zealous in keeping the law, Romans 10, 20. Their entire lives were built around seeking God. The law influenced how they dressed, what they ate, their policies, oh, their, yeah, their politics, their work schedule, their giving, among other things. At certain times of the day, everybody stopped to pray. These were religious people. Their whole lives were consumed with speaking God. Then Paul came along and thoroughly rattled their religious cage by saying that the Gentiles had received by faith what the Jews were working so hard to obtain by their actions. Do you a, get that now? Okay, go on. A Gentile is a non-Jew, but the term in Paul's day had become simonious with a, with a pagan. They were people who had no relationship with God. Instead of denying themselves, they indulged in themselves. They called them heathens today. Yet Paul was saying these heathens who were following after righteousness were, weren't seeking God, who weren't trying to live holy, have obtained unrighteousness by faith. Verse 30. If it wasn't bad enough to the Jews, it put together... It, Put it together with verse 31. But Israel, all of you religious people trusting in your performance for salvation have not obtained unto it. And it is any wonder that Paul upset the religious people wherever he went. He was saying these heathens out there weren't even trying to live holy, are more acceptable to God than you. They have become righteous by faith in the gospel. By gospel. And you who are living holy are rejected by God. This incested many people. Jeez. It was probably why Paul suffered the persecution that he did. And it's the reason why anyone who preaches the true gospel of God still suffers persecution today. Galatians 5.11 and 6.12. The grace of God is offensive to religious people. Now, when you start talking, all right, um, about the Lord, about the Lord, to your family. Do any of them think you're in a cult? Mm -hmm. You got the microphone, honey. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> you're so sweet. I don't know. I, I don't know if they think a cult, but off. Definitely off. You're so. off. Yeah. Off. Now, now, Debbie, does anybody think you're a little off? Oh, dear Lord. D, are you a little off too? Yeah, but my daughter's mother-in-law thinks that she's off too because she just went to her nephew's baptism in the grandma. Oh, 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 sorry. Give it again. My daughter's mother-in-law thinks my daughter's off because my daughter went to her nephew's baptism and the grandma's Catholic and she's looking at my daughter like why aren't you praying why aren't you taking communion why aren't you participating and my daughter's like I am not religious and I am not Catholic and she emailed her daughter and like why isn't Amanda participating she's like mom she is not Catholic <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they judge the worst how about you missy does anybody think you're a little off the wall with your religion? No? no. Okay, how about you, Pastor Kenny? I don't know, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really, yeah. I, uh, probably some of, of uh, my family probably thinks yeah, that we're a little bit weird. Like Andrew says, no, they're weird. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the way I look at it. Oh. Yeah. I know that... Um, 
My family thought I was in a cult. My brother Daryl wanted to get me out of the cult. He's dead from AIDS. Wanted to get me out of an occult. Right? Isn't that amazing? I know that they don't really look at it as a cult, but I think they really look at it as like you're really over the top with all this stuff going on here. You know? Yeah. Isn't that wonderful what to is, know? You know, what do they mean when they think we're over the top? You just have you're just involved in it a little too much. It's just yes. you don't you know, yes. I mean you can have a little of that but you get a lot of that and it's like oh like even if I'm not drinking it's like Pat, come on, you know, and <laughs> or whatever and I'm just you know, but they kinda know me that way now, but you know, they don't really know know me. Mm hmm I was in the hospital one time in the emergency waiting room and um, I heard these people who were Catholic, I'm quite sure, speaking. There was a, a group of them at first. It started like two and then more came and they were talking about this or these Jesus freaks that they knew. <laughs> um, I was just listening you to them. You do not believe in Jesus love. Well, but they were religious, but they were talking about the Jesus freaks. And I thought, you know, I would be considered one of those, <laughs> you know, but yeah, it was just, I'm like, you're, you, you belong to a church, but you're condemning someone for being a Jesus freak. It was just odd. Okay, you want to hear something funny? And Pam, we just figured this out. My sister is religious Catholic. She has us be godparents to her children. But when it comes time for First Communion, we couldn't figure it out. All the other families would let the godparents sit up with them. Right. Oh, no. No, no. Not with me and Pam, it wasn't. We, there was no room for us to be sitting in the pew of where the, where the godchildren were. And so the last time, it was very obvious that when Pam was supposed to sit, she told her there's no room for her, so she was going to sit back by me. So anyways, all of a sudden, Pam looks up there, and she goes, but there's a lot of room. How come they're not up there? And I turned, and I looked at her, and I said, you must not be religious enough for them. Are you going to go take communion? And are you going to kneel this time? And she looked at me and she goes, no. Because <laughs> she usually plays her games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know when Tracy was at Holy, Holy Angels, the Catholic school, and she was talking about Jesus, you know, behind the school, and they were talking about Jesus. And they called her a Jesus freak. They said, you're just a Jesus freak. Well, she said, whose freak are you? She came home and told me that. I was like, oh, that was a good one. Knowing what we know now. <laughs> Blow them right away. But you know what? Why, why would people do that? Why would people call us Jesus freaks? Simply because... Um, they don't know. They don't know the truth, so they get offended. Yeah. It's what it is. Yeah. They're offended. Do they feel like we're condemning them? Yes, even mm -hmm. if you aren't, just by your actions condemns them. Yeah, yeah. Like Vaughn, your mom used to say to me, you know, you, you're always looking down at me. You're always condemning me. I never did that. Mm -mm. But, you know what I mean? But. Was the Holy Spirit condemning her because she was seeing Jesus? Yeah. So when go ahead. Yeah, that's what my daughter was saying about her husband's mom. She was complaining about Amanda, saying, "Why are you judging me like that?" And my daughter's like, "I'm not judging you. You're criticizing me because I'm not participating in your ways." And I'm like, "Well." You know, I said to my daughter, "I'm like, she's telling you she doesn't like you because you're not participating." I'm like, "Well." It's not that. <laughs> no. But you know, th this is some, I don't hear it like I used to hear it. You're just judging us when we were over at assembly. You're just judging us when, when Pam, uh, no, 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 no. Jan and Ed started teaching us the, the truth of the word of God, and that got out. Okay, that got out. 
because we were in a Bible study and we're just right there listening to Ed and blah, blah, blah. Well, it got out of the bag who we were. And then the Mater boy got cancer. They didn't want us around because God was doing that to him. God was killing him. He was making tapes to his boys for every year of their age, and he's dead. But we were like hot coals, you know? And I'm thinking, and you know, you'd come into church and all of a sudden, and I'm thinking, I don't believe this is happening, you know? And you knew you had to get out because you weren't wanted. But that's what we have to watch, is that when people come in, if they're doing things that aren't Christian and they're Christians, leave them alone. They'll grow into it. You know that? We're not going to judge them. I got enough right here to judge. Then I'm trying to judge him. Well, I got enough right here, and he's got to take care of himself. I can't do that. But isn't that what we do? But. Why do they come up against us so much? You have family, you have family, and so on. And why, why, why? Lindsay, because they don't understand. And when they don't understand, I have found that when they don't understand, then they get offensive. Yeah, but they don't want to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. But well, they think they know the truth. You think, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, and it's sad because when you look at it, they're not born again. They're not born again because there's this, this religion, and they're going to get to heaven through that. And you so much want to share it with them. You so much want them to know it because you love them, and you just got to walk away. Here, Lord, I give them to you. It's, it's, it's just a shame. But now can you see what Paul was going through? Mm -hmm. This was a whole new thing with Paul, wasn't it? And, and people were so close to the Old Testament yet, even worse, right? Look at Jesus, when Jesus came to set him. They killed him. They killed him. He was a son of God. He came to take their sins, and they killed him. How did the disciples die? Very horrible death. But that's what happens when people became so hard-hearted. So you, you got to give them to the Lord, and sometimes you gotta, you got to back off because they'll consume you. They'll let her consume you, and, and you're just like, I can't. You know, like when someone died in our family, and I had a family member say that Janet said she was in hell. Remember that? I, that came to my ears, and I called my sister, and I said, did you say, oh, I never said that. Went back to the source, and she said, I heard it, and I trusted this person that the source. Why would I say something so stupid when I know Vaughn was in heaven? Mm -hmm. And even if she would have died, me not knowing, that's not for me to judge. I don't know what's happened in that last moment. Do you know? Mm -hmm. Leave it alone. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. But to stir, but isn't that what the enemy wants to do? Mm -hmm. Stir up something. It's just like when parents pass on and there's a will or there's money there. What happens? All of a sudden the fangs come out and I want this and I want that. That kind of happened with our family and I was like, go ahead and have it. And then once I had stuff home, because they didn't want it. Oh, where did that desk go? Where did that clock go? You didn't want it, right? Mm -hmm. Come and get the clock. And Vernon got mad at me because Mom put that in my house for staying at my house for nothing. I said, Mom, I don't need a grand grandfather clock. I have one. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But Vernon got mad at me, didn't he? And he finally said, you give him one more thing, and you're going to really get me mad. I don't care. I don't care. It's not. We had. You know, would I got to tell you this? You know how God works. Just to to kind of sum this up, 
Okay, you know how mom had some costume jewelry and you looked at it, and you know how your mom says someday I'd like you to have this here, and anyway, they got this big box of jewelry and one sister took it, and you know, you know how you kind of sneak things off? Well, I don't know how many years later it was upstairs, her kids had a rummage sale, they took the whole box and sold it. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. Mom stuff, and I went, <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. But we can't do stuff like that. We got to love each other. We've got, who cares? Right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was saying this here, that you love people while they're here, like your mom. We loved her when she was here. We had peace with Vaughn. Some of the family members didn't. I can't help that. I can't help that. Daryl, I had peace with Daryl when he died of AIDS. I don't care what people said. I had peace with Dwayne when he died. I don't care what people said. With Ev, I don't care. I got peace. And that surpasses all understanding. And the way they treated me, you know, Evan, Dwayne, and you know, I don't care. I got peace. And for Dwayne to say he loved me, That was a milestone, you guys. But I've got that right up here. God is good all the time. Then he had a lot of antiques, him and Ev did. Now, this is God. They wouldn't even, they had 44 clocks that we could count just in that, that what room would you call it? Great room or something? 44 clocks. They wouldn't give anything to their kids or anybody, right? They had all antique stuff. The house burned. <laughs> I'm sorry. Isn't it terrible? It burned up. <laughs> Am I laughing? They treasured it so much. Let's put that up there. No, now this is the funniest part. Uncle, Uncle Dwayne down in his basement. He had all these DU decanters, walls of them. Yeah. He said they were worth thousands of dollars. Yes. <laughs> and he said, Keith told us this, that old buzzard over there, he don't have a clue. She opened every one of them and drank them dry. <laughs> <laughs> they were worth nothing. <laughs> they were worth nothing. She laid in that bed and, she, and he's telling her how much she loves her. Keith is telling us his story. He has no clue they are <laughs> worthless. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you, you look at that, and there, I mean, there was a lot of antiques in there that were worth a lot of money. But, it, and what didn't burn up, the, it was scorched, it was, you know, it, it, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it was. <laughs> You know, they were both getting up in age where they weren't going to take them with them when they die. So why wouldn't they start letting the kids? Why grandkids? not? Yeah. You know, no, none of them got any you know, uh, benefit from it. When the fire was, it all burnt. Or it was destroyed by the water from, you know, putting it out. I don't know if Dawn was able to, to get much out of it, you know. I felt kind of bad because she would have liked some things from her mom. You know, but it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it was hilarious. It was. I'm not laughing. It was funny. I know it's not funny, but when you look at it, what does greed do? What does it do? It goes up in smoke. It goes up in smoke. What is that? Goes back on you. I mean, these are these are possessions. These are things. It consumes you, you know, and because that greed comes in, and and and, and it's in it's in Christians as as well as non Christians. I'm like, I don't really care. Really, think about it. Sheik. Anyway, but when Vernon put a kibosh to me that if I give one more thing, he was going to I don't know what he was going to do with me, but he was mad at me. Vernon never got mad at me, but he's he, still mad. He's still mad. He's, I mean, he's mad about everything with that family. Yeah, yeah he still he brings it up all yes. 
all the time, you know, it's, it's over, it's gone, it's done. Yeah. But he'll bring it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, th I think what he did, what, what happened to me, it hurt them to see what they did to me. But then for me to forgive them, he couldn't understand mm -hmm. that. And to lead them to the Lord, and when Ev died, to be there for Duane, and, and you and I were at Ev's house, sitting with, with Ev, you know, until she passed on, because the kids didn't want to be in the room. I mean, he, he couldn't understand that. But he's not born again at this point, you know? But so I think, I think with your brother, though, it, it hurt him more of how they hurt your mother and dad. Oh. That was worse. That, I think that's what bothered him. I think so, and I think but, that, you know, because he was there when they threw him out. Well, you know, we're supposed to forgive people. He hasn't been able to forgive. Yeah. yeah. But so, where does it, where does it get you? Tell me yeah. about it. Nowhere. Nowhere. Leave it go. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, life goes on. <laughs> oh, no, that's terrible. Okay. One of, one, of, one of Dwayne and Ev's grandsons, I forget his name again, he was, we stopped there. Pastor Kenny and I stopped there after the fire and because the, there was a car there. And do you remember the young man, was it Dawn's son or, or Keith's son that took us Craig. through there? Craig. Craig. He's laughing. He is laughing. He says, look at that old, he was going to keep this. Look at here, you know, and he's going through the house and I'm thinking, oh my goodness. And all of a sudden you start laughing because... They're laughing because Grandpa was very selfish, and they never they never wanted to be with the grandkids or anybody because they were busy drinking. You know, it, they cut the family off, and so. But he was going. Remember that? Yeah. Well, he had your brother had that big shed, and it was filled right from the floor to the ceiling as high as you could of all different stuff. And, they, and the, his kids or grandkids could have used some of that, you know. Absolutely. Made use of it. Oh, no. They, you wouldn't budge an inch to give it to any of them. It's, it's, really, it's really sad. It's really sad. But what are you going to do? Life goes on, but I just, okay, okay, let's go on. Page 224, the stumbling stone. Who wants to read that? <laughs> Wherefore, Keisha's gonna. why is this true? How could this be? Because the religious Jews sought it, righteousness, not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone, Romans 9.32. The reason why the non-religious have become accepted by God and the religious remain rejected is because the non-religious sought righteousness by faith in God's grace and the religious sought it by faith in their own holy actions. When the heathen heard the gospel, the salvation was a gift and they didn't have to earn it. They embraced it. To them it was very beneficial because they hadn't been living a proper life and they knew it. When someone came along and told them that God would accept them on the basis of, of grace as a gift and and that all they had to do was believe and receive Jesus as their savior, they went for it. What a deal. The religious person rejected Jesus for basically the same reasons. The gospel told them it wasn't their goodness that earned them relationship with God. They had to believe on Jesus and receive salvation as a gift. They responded, that's no fair. Look how hard I've worked. I put a lot of effort into this. Do you mean that all of my self-denial denial doesn't make God love me more? Are you saying that all of my holy living doesn't make me any better than the person who's been living in gross sin? Do you mean that I need the same degree of salvation as that old reprobate over, the, over here? Religious pride wouldn't let them receive a free gift, a free gift that, like that. Isn't that today yet too, though? Yeah, you get somebody, they can be born again and they're so stuck, you couldn't, you couldn't budge them and they'll protect it, but they're the, they're the most unhappiest, grumbling people you ever, did you ever meet somebody like that? And you're just like, I love you, but I can't be with you very long because you bring me down. Okay, I'm sure all of you, yeah, some way or another, but you can't let it do it. It's hard, but you can't, you can't let it happen. 
Go ahead. The exact same thing happens all around the world today. Many religious people are trying to do the right things, and it's not that what they are doing is wrong. It's the fact that they are putting their faith in their actions instead of receiving salvation as a gift. For these people, it's offensive to hear the gospel preached. It's upsetting to listen to somebody say that someone, I got it, yeah, thank you though, could not be living as holy as they are, but receives from God better because they're putting faith in a savior instead of earning it. Those are fighting words for a person who's trusting in themselves. Wow. I was on a plane one time, and this young man, well, yeah, well, he had to be, thir I think he was 35 or 36, and I think I told you about this a long time ago, and we got talking, well, you're a Christian, oh, that's really good, and, and he started talking about Joel Olstein, and I said, oh, he's really good. I he tore into me like you wouldn't believe. He's all about prosperity. I said, do you know him personally? No. I said, are you praying for him? No, not for him. You want to be broke? Yeah. But I, the, the hate, the, I, I couldn't believe it. The hate. And I thought, i got to ride next to this guy. Well, I'm going to read. <laughs> I couldn't take it. But I don't care who it was. I don't care. But you don't do that about other pastors. You know? Oh, my. Okay. It just isn't fair. Who would like to read that? It just isn't fair. I can. Go ahead. I've seen this happen again and again. Some pillar of the church is there every time the doors are open. They pray and lead the Sunday school class. They knit quilts and bake pies. They're always doing religious deeds but they've been struggling for years with some sickness, financial need, or problem in their life that hasn't been met. Then some drunk comes in off the street with nothing to offer God. Someone tells them the gospel, saying, it's not according to how holy you are. You don't need a track record of righteousness. Just receive what you need from God as a gift. All you have to do is believe. This reprobate receives the same miracle that dear old saint so-and-so has been seeking for 20 years. The drunk gets it, and the religious person doesn't. So the religious person swells up with pride and whines. It just isn't fair. Isn't that something? Wow. Keep going. We don't need justice. We need mercy. I used to work in a photography studio developing photo, uh, pictures. We joke about some of the people who came in to look at their proofs. Often they'd comment, this picture doesn't do me justice. Although we n never actually did it, we wanted to say, lady, you don't need justice, you need mercy. Yeah. <laughs> That's Andrew. <laughs> if God gave us what we deserved, every dear old saint so-and-so wouldn't receive. We couldn't approach God based on faith in ourselves. We might think we deserve it more than someone else, but we have all sinned and come short of God's standard, Romans 3.23. Religious people trusting in their own goodness are the hardest people to reach. They were the ones who gave Paul the biggest problems. Mm. They crucified Jesus and pro persecuted the church. It's still religious people today who come out against the true gospel. Good people trusting in their own holiness are the most difficult to reach with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the gospel is preached to someone who isn't living righteous, it's good news. They respond in faith to that positive message of God's grace. But unless God supernaturally intervenes with re revelation and conviction, a religious person trusting in their efforts will resist the gospel. They're proud of what they've accomplished, and they feel better than someone else because of their own effort. The gospel sounds to them like all this, their great righteousness has been to no avail. Of course, holiness is still beneficial, because it denies Satan access into our lives and helps us in our relationships with other people. But it doesn't make us more acceptable to God. Neither does our lack of holiness make us less acceptable to God. Our relationship with God must be based entirely upon faith. Just keep on going. Good works, but wrong no motive. Romans 9.32 says that these religious people didn't receive righteousness because they sought it, not by faith, but by the works of the law. 
Works of the law refers to doing good things, but with the wrong motive. It's trusting in what you have done instead of trusting in what God has done. The Bible often also refers to works of faith, 1 Thessalonians 1, 3, 2, or 2 Thessalonians 1, 11. The motive is the difference. The work of the law is when you're doing something with the mindset that this is going to earn your relationship with God. He owes it to you based on what you did. That's the work of the law. Work of faith may be the exact same action, but the mindset behind it is, I'm not doing this to earn relationship with God, but because God has already given me relationship with himself. I love him and I want to serve him. Works of faith are motivated by faith and love, not a sense of obligation and debt. Paul was saying that these Jews had the wrong motivation. They were doing the right things with the wrong motive, so they stumbled over the stumbling stone. Romans 9.32. Then he quoted from Isaiah 8.14 and 28.16 of the Old Testament. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him, Jesus Christ, shall not be ashamed. Romans 9.33. In other words, Jesus Christ is planted right in the path of every single person. God confronts every individual with the truth that they need a Savior because they cannot save themselves. Some respond properly by faith and receive the Lord and his precious gift of salvation. Others try to maintain their own goodness and stumble over the grace of God. The very thing that caused them to trip over Jesus, this, over Jesus the Savior, will make them fall flat on their faces on their way to hell, trusting their own holiness. Either you accept the truth and it becomes li liberating and life-giving, or you deny it and it becomes damning. It's your choice. You know, I, I've got to say this here. You know, when I started listening to Andrew Womack, um, uh, let me see, 2015? Yes, I think it was. A little bit. At first, I was a little hesitant to share it because it was right out, it was the end of that year, hasn't it, you know what I mean? But then, putting out a little at a time, like the Lord was showing me, people were taking a hold of it, people were taking a hold of it. And some people were, I don't, I don't, you know, and they leave, because they can't handle it. But that's up to them. You, you can't go against them because of that, okay? But you put the food out there, it's up to them what they eat, right? But now, you just look at, now, now, how long have you been into this? How long have we been doing these books? Since 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, and I was sharing things before then, but now, your whole mindset has changed. Mm -hmm. Now you're like, how could we believe that other way? Is that true? Isn't that what we do? But why don't, why don't we want to take the next step sometimes? Because maybe we don't have confidence in us, or should we have the confidence in God? Do you think about that? Why don't we have confidence in God? Not in ourselves. Because you know what God wants us to do? You know, Kenneth, Kenneth and Gloria said this here, and I know Keith Moore has said it too, that, and Jerry Svel, but you go out on a limb so far out you can't get back. That's when you trust God, and that's when you're going to see miracles. Or you can push and push and push, and you'll get what you want, but you'll get an Ishmael. You would, yeah. Okay, you, you had given me that tape that time a little bit on that. That was just delicious. But Debbie, go on. We'll, we'll get more of this done, okay? Isn't it somebody else's turn? Well, keep on going. <laughs> Misdirected zeal. In the next chapter, Paul repeated what he said at the beginning of Romans 9 about his fellow countrymen, the Jews. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to the knowledge. Romans 10, 1 and 2. These Jews were very zealous for God, but not according to the knowledge meaning they were spiritually blind, they were ignorant of their heavenly father and of his son. In other words, having the right knowledge is more important than having the right actions. Mm -hmm. These Jews were doing some great things. 
They were praying, paying tithes, and doing many of the commands within the law. A Pharisee, a religious Jew, would have accepted would be accepted into any modern church today. They were prayer warriors, faithful attendees, and diligent tithers. Very few churches would ever deny membership to a diligent tither. These Pharisees were very holy people, but their zeal was for the letter and the form of the law and not for God himself. Due to that fact, they weren't accepted by God. They had misdirected zeal and knowledge. Many people today say that it didn't matter what you believe, as long as you believe something. They teach that there are many ways to God. It doesn't matter if you're a Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, or Christian. In the end, they all come together. Wrong. This mindset is in direct opposition to what Romans 10, 2 Amen. is saying. Mm -hmm. These religious people had a zeal for God. Not just zeal, but zeal for God. However, it wasn't according to the knowledge. Therefore, it wasn't a saving knowledge. They were sincere, but sincerely wrong. They believed the wrong thing. Now, what did it say about when you love God, what do you do? You just naturally want to serve. You, just, you don't do it because you have to, but you just like, you know, I want to do this. That's love. That's when you have a mate. You love that mate. And you want to do things for them. Um, or, or, you know, you know what I'm saying. But when it comes to God, all of a sudden you want to you wanna go out and give that salvation message because you love him and because you want other people to know him. You, you want to be able to give somebody a hallelujah handshake, you know, put some money in your hand. You like to buy somebody lunch or, you know what I mean? You don't have, you don't have but $10 and here you give it away to somebody because of Jesus' love. Then he turns around and he says, hey, that one's going to get a double blessing. Why? Because showing your love for God, that's what he's looking for. The rich young ruler loved money more than he loved God. And you never hear about him after that, do you? Because he chose death instead of life. He had a choice. Okay? So who would like to read the next one? Two types of righteousness. Nobody? I oh, will. Go ahead. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Romans 10 3. 1. God's righteousness. 2. Self righteousness. We obtained self righteousness by trusting in our own actions. We received we receive God's righteousness by faith in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. So out of the two ways to righteousness, only one is correct. The only righteousness that will put us in right standing and relationship with God is the righteousness of God that is given to us as a free, unearned gift. Most people are seeking after a righteousness that comes based on their own works and performance. This is what Paul was saying about these Pharisees in Romans 10, verse 3. Sad to say, there are still many people today who are ignorant of God's righteousness. When you use the word righteousness, most people think about their own actions. They think about their own performance. If someone were to stand up in church and declare, I'm righteous, they'd be criticized and reminded of things they'd done wrong. Most believers would not think of their born-again spirits that have had God's righteousness imputed. They'd be looking on externals. Yes. There are two different kinds of righteousness, the kind that we produce by our own actions and the kind that God gives us when we are born again. The only kind of righteousness that we can relate to God on is the one that comes as a free gift. In our born-again spirits, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Compared to the righteousness that comes from God, our self-righteousness is like a filthy, soiled rag. Isaiah 64, verse 6 God's righteousness is infinitely more, and our self-righteousness is infinitely less. The Jews were ignorant of God's righteousness, and so are most religious people today. 
They don't understand that we are made righteous the moment we place our faith in Jesus Christ. We don't become righteous gradually as we improve our actions. We are born again righteous. It's a gift. Isn't that awesome? That is so awesome when you think about it. God is so good to us, and now, you know, like if you see a beautiful sail out there, what do you do? You want to tell people about it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, go here. Go. You know, you can get this deal. You can get that deal. I see that on Facebook, and I see you girls doing that. You know, it, it, but that's love. Self-centered is. I don't want anybody else to know. But we're not self-centered. Once you come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're no longer thinking about yourself all the time. You're thinking about others. Your flesh all of a sudden isn't important to you. Oh, we still want to take care of it. Deodorant is a good thing. But you, but you got to, you know what I mean? You're just not, that's not the center of your world anymore. It's Jesus becomes the center. How can you love somebody you've never seen? Because there is something inside of you you just can't understand. But it's a good thing. Would it be? Yeah. What does Mark eleven twenty three say? I'm going to read this to you real quick. Mark eleven twenty three says, For verily I say unto you, put your name on there, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, shall not doubt in his heart. That's where the devil steals is because of doubt. You doubt. God. I think that's sometimes why people don't want to go to the next step, step because they doubt God. Tithing is very, very hard for some people. Tithing and offering, it's very, very difficult for them. But they don't realize that God's trying to get stuff to them, not from them. But the only way he can release it is we have to release first so he can multiply it back to us. Isn't that amazing? Oh my goodness. You just look at, you know, like, like Aaron and Allie, and you had, was it Sunday morning? Yeah, that Aaron was giving his testimony on, on Tyler's rights with little Levi going over the pontoon. He was in the gated area, and he, they were going gonna go into the wake. And you know how the, how, well, anyway, the kid, went over, he's just a little guy, went off, four of the kids are up there, and it's Aaron and Allie, went over, bounced on there, and went into the water. The first thing he did, what did he do? He slammed it into reverse and turned off the motor, because this little boy is under that pontoon. Okay? And as he's under the pontoon, you know, he, Aaron is like, Allie, look, you know, so Allie's up there looking, hey, Catch him, he's coming out the back. Picked him up and he was fine. What could have happened? What could have happened? What could have happened? If he didn't turn off the motor, he could have gotten caught or something. Absolutely. You know what? Even if he turned off the motor, he got gotten caught in one of those, yeah. you know what those, yeah, he could have got, and he could have drowned. Mm -hmm. He could have got so much water in his lungs by then. But, tithers rights. Amen. That's with Kyle. Tithers right. With Kenny, tithers rights. You just yell that out at the devil and he's got to take his hands off. We don't know the importance of that, do we? Yes, we do. We do. Tithers rights. God just wants us to love him enough to trust him. And he said the least thing to give to God is money. Try to understand that one. But anyway, God is good. Is he good? Okay, let's do this here. We've, we've pretty much got that down. We discussed it. Let's go to the questions and answers. Can we do that? Let's go there, right there. Okay. Pastor Kenny, you want to read the questions, son? Sure, as soon as I find them. As soon as you find them. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> Which chapter describes a normal, spirit-empowered Christian life? Now, the, remember the scriptures? Yeah. Romans 7, Romans 8, or Romans 9? Romans 8. 8. Romans 8, okay. Which chapter describes the frustration of trying to serve God out of our own human ability, flesh? Romans 7. Amen. I didn't read them all. 
<laughs> the kid is right on. Go ahead. According to Romans 9, 30, 31, who followed not after righteousness, but had attained it by faith? The Gentiles, he non-religious, the Jews, Israel, religious. The what? The, the what? Gentiles. Gentiles. The Gentiles. Heathen, non-religious. Okay. Who followed after the law but had not attained righteousness? The gentile, Gentiles, heathen, non-religious. The Jews, Israel, religious. The Jews. Be the Jews. They followed after the law. They just didn't want to let go of it, did they? Yeah. Who is it that went and took Jesus aside and talked to him? Nicodemus, and did he get born again? Yes. How can a man go back into a mother's womb? He went on the sly to get it. Huh? Go ahead. Five. According to Galatians 5, 11 and 6, 12, what does everyone who preaches the true gospel still suffer even today? Persecution. Persecution. Persecute? Will you Jesus freak you? You know, when I hear stuff about myself, I'm like, I don't care what you think. I don't care what he thinks. I just tell people, please don't tell me. Don't tell me what people said, good or bad. Shut up. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. What did the religious people stumble, stumble over in Romans 9, 32? The stumbling stone. The stumbling stone. If any of this you want to talk about or you're... Just, you know, but anyway, go ahead. They sought righteousness, not by faith, by what? Their own holy actions. By the works of the law. Yeah. By their own actions, by their own actions, the works of the law. So they thought they had it. They see, they just finished that. And Jesus told them what was going to happen. But they didn't believe Jesus because they were so caught in their tradition. But see, we still have that today, right? Jesus didn't condemn them. They condemned themselves to hell. Really. You know, when somebody di dies and you think, did they know Jesus? I used to think that and my heart would grieve. And one day the Lord said, that's none of your business. You don't know what happened. But could you kind of tell me? It's none of your business. You're right. What good is it going to do to hang over that boat and keep on throwing up? It's not going to. Move on. They made a choice. Okay. According to Romans 3.23, who has sinned and come short of the glory of God? Oh, amen, all of us. What kind of works does 1 Thessalonians 1.3 and 2 Thessalonians 1.11 speak of? Works of faith. Works of faith, yes. How is Jesus described in Romans 9.33 for those who seek not righteousness by faith? A stumbling stone and a rock of offense. Amen. Amen. Oh, you got to give the answer. A stumbling stone and rock of offense. So there you got it. Okay. What does Isaiah 8.14 reveal that the Messiah to come will be to both houses of Israel? Stumbling stone and rock of offense. Yeah, now it was a stumbling stone. What does Isaiah 28.16 say that the Lord God would lay in Zion? A foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Okay. According to Romans 10, 1 through 3, what was Paul's heart's desire and prayer for Israel? That they all might be saved. Yes. Just think that desire is still there for every person. Oh. What did Israel have? Zeal for God. A zeal for God. But not according to what? Knowledge. Knowledge. You know, the, the, you know what? The more knowledge you get, okay? The, you know, okay. Um, when I, when I, I, was, I was in the Catholic Church, when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I was at a Christian women's, okay? But then went back to the Catholic Church, 
and, and I felt so uncomfortable. Did you ever do? Yeah. You've, and, and you're like, I just don't fit here. Why don't I fit here? And I was thinking about that today as I was reading this. And, and so I contacted the priest. And I wanted some of the questions answered because I got born again. But I wanted questions answered because all of a sudden it came to me, why am I praying to Mary when I'm supposed to, like it says in John, go to the Father in Jesus' name? You know, th those things were coming to me. Boy, he got mad at me. And, and after, then I wrote a letter, and I called, and finally he said, we have no place for you. I, I felt so hurt, but I was trying so hard because I didn't want to hurt my parents to leave the church. But I knew there was something better. I knew there was something else. And if I, did you ever do that, your question, and you're not going to let go until you get the answer? I didn't get the answer there. But you know what? Why, if somebody said that priest was born again, and I couldn't see it, to be honest with you. That's not my business either. But why didn't he take me, why didn't he look what I was asking him and look it up? Well, you are questioning his religion. You are questioning what they stand for. So yeah. there would be no place for you there. Yeah. Yeah, you think about that. I was questioning his religion. But the thing of it is, think, you get born again. Do you want to stay stuck in that same pothole? No. Do you want to grow? Yes. Absolutely. Why don't other people want to do that? One of the things that, what is that? They're comfortable. And another thing that the Lord gave me today, not only comfortable, they value their flesh more than anything else because they don't want to give up the partying. They don't want to give up the drinking. They don't want to give up. They don't want to give up. They don't want to give up. Because they think it's going to be boring. I want to have fun. You can have fun. I have so much fun. I do. So they, told me, they told me, Janet, you would have fun in a closet all by yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I do. <laughs> But I'm like, I just. I, I don't think she's really alone in the closet. She's talking to all her clothes. <laughs> hey, you, you, I don't want you anymore. Yeah, I like you. You come on over here. I want to talk to you. <laughs> I do talk to clothes, you know, because it's talking to me. It's telling me, I'm nice. You should try me on. Get it on and say, you lied to me. <laughs> I got three shirts. I did that this weekend, too. I got rid of three shirts. There you go. There you go. You got to talk to stuff, you know. <laughs> well, anyway, you know, there, there's so many things that you think about, but then is to just leave people alone. Leave people alone. If they want, don't want to move ahead, uh huh. No, but if you if they'll if they'll ask you questions, give them the answer. Get, you know, if you can help. You know, I my one sister-in-law. Um, I led her to the Lord. I gave her, she was having health issues. I gave her the little book, God's Creative Flower for Healing, and she hid the book. She said, I have to hide that. And, and I was like, she said, I don't want my husband to see it. He'll get mad. What? Well, she hid it. Years later, she was packing up stuff. Oh, she said, I've got to give this back to you. She's in a nursing home with dementia but I led her to the Lord. Why would you listen to another person and give up? Why would you do that? If he told me not to go to church or not, this is, this is maybe wrong to say, I'd give him up before I'd give up God. <laughs> you know? And he wouldn't ask that of me, but I, I would. I understand the, and the best decision you ever made. Because you have a son and a daughter and little grandbabies coming up. So when you, when you think about that, why would you give up? Why would you give up the truth of God's word to move back into death row? Think about that. Why? Right? So anyway, what we're going to do, any questions? Any questions? 
questions. We didn't finish. Why well, didn't finish? No. Oh. I got. Oh, I gotta go to the next. Oh, wait a minute. I gotta go to the next page. Come back in, Steve. <laughs> okay. I apologize. Okay, go ahead. Okay. What were the the religious ig ignorant of? God's righteousness. God's right. The same thing today. God's righteousness, right? Okay. What were they going about to establish? Their own righteousness. So. Is that what's happening today all over? If I say you're racist, then you're racist. Right? There was, there was a black gentleman on um, Hannity? Oh, no. No. Anyway, the, 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 that was today I had something on. And um, they were calling him racist because he had a Trump hat on. And, 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 Brett Baer was it said, how can they call you racist? Because of the Trump hat. What? I thought that was if you stand against blacks. Is, no, am I getting confused? So if you say, if you like Trump, you're racist. If you like the Democrats, you're just fine to go. And you can hate everything around. That just doesn't make sense. Okay, let's go on. They had not submitted themselves unto what? The righteousness of God. Amen. According to Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, we are saved how? By grace through faith. And it's God's faith. Do you know that? Do you know it's God's faith that you get saved? It's not your faith. It's God's faith. That's maybe hard to understand, but we'll get that another time. Is salvation a gift or something we earn by our works? It's a gift. Amen. According to 2 Corinthians 5, 21, what was Jesus made for us? For sin. Sin. Oh, um, thank you, Jesus. What nose. were we made the instant we were born again? Righteous. Righteous. How does Isaiah 64, 6 describe all of our self-righteous? As filthy rags. Filthy um, rags. When we try to do something, it's like filthy rags. That's why, you know what, guys, before I do something, I want to make sure it's right that I'm not getting an Ishmael. Right? Think about those things. Okay, anybody got a testimony? I'll give one. Um, the Holy Spirit brought this to me um, just recently, but it actually happened to Brian now a number of years ago. Um, when he, he likes to go deer hunting, and he always likes to go to a new and challenging place. So he went um, to the western part of the state, to Buffalo County, and it's very um, large public hunting area, and he got lost. And, you know, <clears throat> at that time I was just learning about, you know, God loving us, you know, and God's protection. And so, you know, I, of course, would pray that over him before he left, and I had to just leave it in God's hands. And so he got lost, and he was basically done. He didn't know where to go. He was tired and cold, and he was just going to stop and sit down, and he was done. He didn't know now, what to do. who is this again? Brian, my Brian. husband. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and all of a sudden, some Hmong or Vietnamese guy shows up, out of the blue, and Brian followed him right out to his vehicle. Is that God? That's God. Does, is that true that God will never leave us or forsake us? Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh. Pastor Kenny, give us a testimony. Uh, I, I can give two. You know, like we've, been, you know, we, we've been dealing a lot with employees. Uh, trying to have good employees and stuff. So we've been praying that our employees, we have favor with our employees and stuff, and that they're the best employees that we could possibly have and that. But we pray, pray for favor for them. Well, the last, last two days, um, a young guy, he just, he just uh, finished school, is gonna go on to the tech, and he's very conscious of what he's doing and everything, and he's coming home with the, uh, one of the company trucks 
yesterday, and uh, uh, um, he's coming up to the ramp on double E and 41 there. This car <clears throat> whips around him and cuts right, right sharply in front of him. The light changed, so the guy had to slam on his brakes. Well, here, my guy is driving a truck. He ain't gonna stop that fast. No. So he smacked him in the back end, you know. Yeah. So the, the kid felt bad that he did, you know, and he was totally not at fault for anything. And the, the good part of it is we got this big deer catcher thing on the front of the truck, so it did not touch the truck at all. The guy had a beater car. Well, now it's a little more beater. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, and, he, and he, he knew he was totally in the wrong. So, again, the favor of God on that. Today, mm. the guys are going to Legend Lake, and they go up through Black Creek that way, going on up. And the guy that's driving the truck, he was just in court recently for, um, he got caught drag racing on College Avenue. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not too smart, but so, so he's very, very cautious with his driving record now. So he's really trying to follow the speed limit. The semi come up behind him, right tight to his tailgate. Just kept on, kept on. So he said he tried, he wasn't going to speed up because this guy was right there. So he tried to slow down and, and the, the truck driver wouldn't give him no grace at all. And finally, he slowed down enough that made the truck driver go around him. He went around him and got behind a lady in a, a car, and he did the same thing to the lady in the car, right on her bumper. Well, in the meantime, that truck driver radios him, and he tells to the police, you got a bunch of drunken drivers on the road. So when my truck gets to Black Creek, the cop in Black Creek is waiting, pulls him over, says, I, we got a report that you guys are drunk. You know, there was three guys in the, oh, oh. yeah, and, yeah, they weren't drunk or not, and the cop realized that there was not, you know, he says, your truck is fine, there's no problems with the truck, you guys are good, take off and go. And then my guy says, well, he did the, the truck driver did the same thing to the lady in the car ahead of us. Okay. Yeah, he says, we got another cop pulling that lady over. So that truck driver tailgating calls him and he caused two people to get yeah you know, so basically I, I yeah so basically I look at it they had the favor of God neither one of them you know they could they could have given them a ticket or probably you know even pull them oh we're gonna give you a test and everything you know so did you ever have somebody follow really close yeah and it and, and I'll turn into a driver, or I'll, yeah, I, you don't want to mess with a semi. But, you know, when Kenny told me that tonight, I was like, was that guy just angry? Was he full of hate? I'm surprised they didn't. He had to have told them who he would, what trucking company he was from. He has to be getting in trouble. So yeah. Getting... That he'll get in trouble for it? Yes. Yeah, I don't good. know. You can't call in and not, and you're, he's going to get in trouble. But that's good, though, because if he does he that to other to people, just think, now, if that driver ahead of him would have gotten angry, you know, they could have, he could have stopped and came out and... Well, they could DOT your truck. They could do all kinds of stuff to yeah. you as a state cop. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. We have favor. We have, we have favor. Sure. Yeah. But they would get in trouble, you said, with... Oh, that trucking company is going to be in trouble. Whoever called in, he is going to be in trouble. And the trucking so, company is going to be so in trouble. So when he called in, he had to identify himself? Yes, he has to identify himself. They don't have to give the people that name of who turned them yeah. in, but he has to identify himself. So he just got that trucking company in a bunch of trouble. Now, what do they do with him? Do you have any idea? I, it's got to be whatever their it, it rules it book says. Yeah, it may depend upon if he was an independent trucker or if he was If he's trucking. independent, he's good to go. But if he, you know, if you work yeah. for a company and you look at their rules, yeah. he can be fired immediately. Wow. But it, it's not right to do that to people. You know, it's just not right. And nine chances out of ten, he was calling you in because he wanted your, he thought a state cop was going to get a hold of you and DOT your equipment. Mm -hmm. They're not stupid people, those truck drivers. Oh. What, what is behind? Say that again. 
a lot of times what they do is they report them because they want to stay patrol to pull you over. And what they have to do is go through an inspection on your truck. Oh. They go through, uh, Uncle Kenny's got to have a DOT number for yeah, his business. On, yeah. okay. oh, and, okay. and then they can go through his truck and check all of his equipment and everything. And pretty soon he's got tickets. So it's just being mean. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, yeah, and evidently the cop must have looked some things over because he said your truck is fine. He told yeah. my guy. Okay. But that's see that's being that's mean. that's how they do that stuff. Yeah. Well, we have favor. Amen. We our company has favor. Okay, testimony. No testimony. Okay, Didi, do you have a testimony? No. You have a testimony, Steve. Come on in. Well, I got uh, blessed today when I got Tip home. it up. Yeah. Tip it up. There you go. <laughs> yes, Steve. Straight in front of you. Straight in front of you. Yeah. Um, yes. I got blessed yes. today uh, when I came home. Um, I don't know about a lot of you, but uh, last year, my property taxes went up $24,000, $25,000. This year, they went up an additional $18,000. And um, I just said, you know what? This is not fair. I said, you can't take advantage of the market because what the market's doing, because in six months it can turn and, and whatnot. So I said, I'm gonna fight this. I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna talk to those people. So I went down there and uh, I was talking to the lady and, and uh, you know, I said, you know, I just wanna make sure that uh, you know, everything is right and whatnot you know, with my house and that permits were taken out and whatnot. Because I said, uh, things were done in 2004. And uh, she says, yeah, we'll just walk through you know, question by question and ask you this stuff. And, and, uh, and uh, she said, okay, what's the size of, or what's the size of your house? I said, uh, it could be a one and a half story or two. And we looked at the drawing and I described it to her. She says, well, we don't have one and a half, so it's a two. I said, okay, but I said, I don't think that's right. And then uh, I said, you need to add more um, selections to your table there, because you only have three <laughs> selections, you know. And uh, then, she went, she said, oh, your first level, it's this big. I said, no, it's bigger than that. And she said, oh, okay. And she said, how big is it? And I said, well, it's this size. And I said, that's because they added a Four Seasons room. I said, it's 16 by 12 with cathedral ceiling and whatnot. Um, she says, your basement is this big. I said, no, they added a basement underneath that. So now it's the same size as the floor above it. And uh, then she said, oh, your downstairs is finished this much. I said, no, it's, I think, when the guys took out the permit, they built that room, but somehow you guys accumulated all the space into the basement and didn't take that room and separate it with this other room. I said, but when you look at the numbers, it's probably approximately the same. It's just how they distribute it. I said, that's good because then it showed that they took out a permit to do the addition. They took out a permit to, to do the egress window. And she said, is there an egress window? in that room, we have that. So they had to have taken out a permit to do that. And that was one of the, the things that I was always concerned about. You know, I have, a, I have a concrete apron stamped 2004. Somebody comes back and says, hey, you know, you put this in. No, I didn't, it's 2004, I moved oh. in 2009. And I have all the paperwork when everything was done. And uh, then she says, uh, your garage, it's this big, it's a two car. I said, no, it's a three car. And she says, well, is it this square footage? I said, yeah. She says, it's a two car. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> and uh, then, I, then she asked me about decks. And she gave me a square footage of like 580 some square feet. And I said, that's probably right. That's about three decks. She says, do you have a pool? I said, yeah. She says, is it above ground or below? I said, above. She says, oh, that doesn't count. Only if it's below. I said, good. Um, so the nice thing was is that I gave her information that she didn't have. In some cases, I help fill in and whatnot. And she says, what you gave me, we'll calculate and we'll do everything. And, and uh, because it was there and we switched systems, it probably just got all messed up when it got transferred over. Mm -hmm. And if it's more square footage, it won't affect you in any certain way. And um, when I came back today, I actually got one third less the increase this year than what they initially proposed, which oh. was good. So I got blessed from that standpoint. Amen. It went down 33% for this year only. Yeah, wow, yeah, thank you. 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 you did get blessed because just about everybody in the town of Buchanan got a raise in Texas. No, I did too. Yeah, yeah he I, said that. I got 25,000 last year and 18,000 this year. Yeah. Like yeah. One third less. 
today now. Okay, 6,000 less. 6,000 yeah, less. You still have 40-some thousand increase. Yeah, you got an increase. But, wow. But, uh, yeah, but everybody, you know, it was probably two years ago when they went through and did reassessment. Mm -hmm. And they pre pretty much raised everybody then. And now oh. this time they're, <laughs> they're raising everybody. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So. Enough is enough. That's yeah, right. Oops, you, be, you better take the, yeah. I, I talked to some of my friends at work who want to sell their house. They get their house on the market, and the first day they have seven offers at 15000 more than asking. And that's what they're taking advantage of, yeah. is that this type of thing is happening. But you go six months, a year from now, and that's not going to be the case, and then all of a sudden your house yeah. value is going to be worth 20000 less than what they're estimating it right now. Yeah, that's why they like to do reassessments that often. Because if the market's up, look at the advantage that they, they have. But you know what she told me? She said, this is going to go on their contract to do this every year for six years. Is that so right? they're going to go through everybody's house eventually in a six-year time frame. So they did one-sixth of people's houses they went through. Next year, they'll do another sixth. Next oh. year, they'll do another sixth. That's the contract that they have. Yeah. So I, I learned a lot. Just yeah. by quizzing her and asking her questions. You, and you know, I don't know how much time the guy spent at your house when he went through, but like our house was guy maybe in there five minutes in and out. Kim, Kim's house the same way. How can they actually do a decent valuation that fast? <laughs> what are you going to do? They're trying to, they're trying to get that money for all those street improvements. <laughs> Actually, I, I talked to some people, too, in the um, uh, town of Harrison, and they were saying that their taxes went up, or excuse me, their, the valuation of the house went up, but then the tax rate went down, that the net, in some cases, was either the same or even less. So we'll have to see what this yeah, billing right. cycle is. <laughs> wow. Well, let's do this here. Does it, do you have a test? I, I do. Go ahead. Okay, so we've been going to Life Fest for about 18 or 19 years. Yes. And we've always had the kids and their friends, and they'd be camping with us. So um, I didn't start volunteering until about five years ago. Um, but now I volunteer every year. I just take one shift. I buy my own ticket, but then I give away my free one-day ticket to somebody else that, who hasn't been able to go. Sure. I just want to be able to give back to, to Life Fest because of all the times that we've been there. And this year, I've always been working in the artist merchandise area. And this year, I got put in the booth for King and Country which is one of our favorite groups. So we're, I'm excited about that. It was going to be really busy and it would be a lot of fun to work in that. And so the guys that are there travel with the group and they um, do all the training with any of the volunteers and they work with them. So they, they always kept saying, well, we want to make sure that our volunteers are very well taken care of. We want to make sure that they have what they need, that they understand what they need to do. They take time to really work with you. When he was done training with us, there was four of us that was placed in that booth, and he said, now I want each of you to take one item off the wall and one item off the table. They just wanted to be able to bless their volunteers. Now, I've been doing this for five years, and nobody's done that before. And so I'm like, you mean anything like that $40 windbreaker that I was eyeing up? Yep, if that's what you want, you take that. Isn't that something? And then I took a CD, and then they come back after we've been working there three, four hours, and they're like, well, we want to bring you some food, but we didn't have a chance to bring some in. Here's $10. Go get yourself something to eat when you're done. You just don't have that, that type of effort by any of the, you know, the vendors or any of the, the people that are there. The volunteer people are there to get you some water if you need it. And then you just, you're, getting, you're given a ticket or something for the volunteer work that you do. And we're wanting to bless others, but they turned around and blessed us this year. So that was a big blessing. Yeah. Isn't that good? That's really cool. That make, now look at, now other people are going to look at King and Country and bless them by buying their CDs and bless yeah. them by, you know, just mm -hmm. talking about it. Okay, well, should we, do you have a testimony? Go ahead. My guardian at Lightham fee was paid for by my attorney that's helping me out. She what? The attorney that I was able to get to represent me for the divorce. The same people, the Judicare, they were able to submit the $350 check to pay for the guardian at litem fee. 
Look at that. You have favor everywhere you go. You know what? This, this is something. When you join God's team, he takes care of you. He just does. He takes care of you. And that's why we don't have to worry about anything. He'll take care of it. Just here, take care of it. Thank you. He's so good. Is he good? Amen. Well, let's, let's, um, let's give our, our offering, if you have tithe, and then we'll take communion. If somebody comes in. This one? Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Um, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll come back to it. I'll come in Sunday. Marita, are you going to be attending the classes every week? No. Oh, otherwise, if you were, we'd get you a sheet also. Oh. Not actually. Yeah. Well, she was looking on. Okay. Father, we thank you. Oh, Daddy, you're so good to us. Daddy, we thank you that we know you as our personal Lord and Savior, and that, Father God, we didn't, we didn't reject you. Oh, God, I thank you that we're going to heaven. I thank you, Jesus, for coming and paying the price for our sins. And I thank you, Father God, that we're going higher and higher with our learning, and that, Father God, we're having these favor testimonies. We're just having life wonderful testimonies. Thank you, Father God, for a continued increase in every area of our lives and in the church, in our families, in our jobs. Thank you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Let's break this bread and let's eat. He, his body was broken so that we could have whatever we asked for in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now, Father God, through Jesus Christ, your blood, your blood was shed for us, and your blood made us, his blood, his blood. made me, Made me the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. I'm sanctified. I'm sanctified. Justified. Justified. Forgiven. Forgiven. I operate. Out, out of time. Out of time. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Isn't that good? Amen. Let's Amen. drink. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you are good and your mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Any questions? No questions? We're good to go. Boy, that was good. I like, I love the testimonies, you guys. So now we've got 15, 16, and then 17, and then we'll go on to this book. And we'll learn more about praise and worship because it, so we'll have this book next week so you can purchase them if you would like. But this is something you're probably going to want to get so that you can do stuff like this because it's, it's something you can't just pick up and read. You have to go back and get more. It is, I think this is one of the best book he's got, books that he has, and I have a lot of his books. I, think you said that about every one of them. I know, but <laughs> this one is the, uh, but this one, this one, just think, I raise a hallelujah, yeah. and what are some of the words in I raise a hallelujah? He, he brought heaven down to us. And he fights for me. When you understand that, when you get in a predicament, you don't feel like praising and worship, and you start to praise and worship, he comes on the scene. But when you learn those things, that's what's exciting. Okay? Oh, I took a picture of a brain. Okay? Hope it wasn't mine. No, I, w I was studying it. I like, to, I like to study the anatomy of a person. So, the more I can, the more I can learn, the better. What? No, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. What did she say? <laughs> it's only my niece. I love it. It's only my niece. Only. Did you say that? Okay. No questions? No questions? Oh, oh, hey, hey, real quick. I almost forgot that. Listen, make hell tremble. 
This is Gloria. That's what Jesus did. He made hell tremble. Okay, for this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. He destroyed, whoops, he destroyed, right he, de he destroyed the works. <laughs> Did you ever notice how refined I am? Yes. <laughs> I, I you carry yourself quite well. <laughs> I enjoy myself. <laughs> I got it, I got it, moving, moving, moving. Okay, tomorrow morning, 9.30. See you right here, same place, same clothes, same everything. <laughs> okay. 